Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Well, you know when there's a tough gospel, there's going to be a tough homily, huh? Sometimes, sometimes people ask me why I preach so much from the scriptures um, rather than many times just by themes. Uh, in, in seminary, they actually teach you mostly to preach in themes, you know, grab a theme from the gospel and run with it. But the reason I preach from the scriptures and just basically go right down the gospel with us is so that it keeps me accountable, so that I have to preach the full gospel truth. And I don't get to just pick some theme that I like and can avoid the ones that are tough. So we just walk through it together, you know. And, and the purpose of tough, sometimes tough teaching from Jesus or from the pulpit is, is not to beat people up or to push people away, but is to draw us all into a deeper encounter with Christ, to draw us all into a deeper relationship with him. Sometimes that comes through deeper conversion and deeper repentance. And so that's all okay, you know. That's, that's the way to go. And, and um, sometimes people get mad and leave, and then hopefully they'll come back later, you know. And I'm sure that was Jesus' hope today when he saw all, all of his, these disciples that had been with him for many, for so long, leave. I'm sure he was praying hard on his knees, probably when he talked to his father at night. Father, bring them back. Open their hearts to, this, to the fullness of this truth. Our gospel at first glance can seem to pick up in a weird spot, but if we remember, uh, because it's because last week we, we kind of skipped the gospel of John because we had the assumption of Mary's solemnity, so we had a different gospel, different readings. Um, but if we, we probably remember, just because we're from being here, because every three years this comes right back up again, and, and, and last week would have been Jesus' Jesus's strongest teaching on the Eucharist. When Jesus taught, and he said very bluntly, Firmly, but lovingly. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. And as you got challenged and pushed back and grumbling against him, he, he didn't back off. He actually got stronger every time and firmer and more clear. He didn't want there to be any unclarity with this teaching. And so actually the verbs that he uses, the verb he uses for eating, this can be literally translated Unless you gnaw on my flesh, unless you chomp on my flesh like a dog chomps on a bone, you have no life within you. Anybody have a dog? And you see them chomp on some bones? And crumbs are flying all over, and then the, the drool's going all over. They thought he was crazy, but he didn't back off. Notice he, did, he doesn't back off today. He actually gives them another, another jab today. <laughs> he actually gives them another jab. Notice he doesn't back off and say, hey, just come on, wait a minute, you guys. I'm just talking hyperbole, you know. You know how we do it around here, hyperbole, just exaggeration to get your attention, you know. No. He doesn't back off. He stands and lets them make a free choice. And then we, we pick up, you know, so, so, so think, so let, let's just correct another Catholic myth buster, you know, and we can some, get a true Catholic teaching. So how many of us were, were taught when we received communion that, you know, don't chew the host because that's irreverent. You have to just suck on the host and let it dissolve in your mouth. How many of us, who, who was taught that one, you know? And, and most of the time it did not dissolve in your mouth. It stuck to the roof of your mouth. And now you're stuck to Jesus. <laughs> and so what Jesus is just saying there to clear that up is that it's not irreverent to chomp on the host. In fact, he wants us to chew on the host, to chew on his flesh. The whole purpose, the primary purpose of the Eucharist is to consume it. Adoration is great, but that's not the primary purpose of the Eucharist. The primary purpose is to eat him. Get his life within us. Chomp on it. Love it. Don't dogs love bones? Oh, they love it. You know? And they guard their bone. You know? Love, the, love your Eucharist. Guard that Eucharist. Well, this is where we pick up today in the gospel. The disciples' response 
Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, this is a hard saying. Who can accept this crazy talk? This crazy talk, cannibalism. Chew on your flesh. Notice, pause and notice again who the audience is today. Right? It's not the Sadducees or the Pharisees or the scribes or a group of Jews or a crowd. It's his disciples. Disciples, the students of his way of life, those who have, many of them, left everything to follow him and have already begun conforming their lifestyle to his lifestyle, letting him change their mind and change their hearts. These are the disciples, the committed ones. This is a hard saying, Lord. Who can accept it? And they begin murmuring about him. The old theme of murmuring coming back. So Jesus says, does this shock you? (laughs) Of course it does. What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It's the spirit that gives life, for the flesh is of no avail. The words I speak to you are spirit and life. In other words, if we reject these words, we're rejecting life, we're rejecting the Holy Spirit. But if we accept his words, whether we understand it or agree with it, we're accepting life, accepting the Holy Spirit of God within us. So in other words, he's telling them how serious this, this, this is and the consequences that come with accepting or rejecting the words that he's speaking to them at that moment. And he just tells them, you know, Jesus, he's very blunt sometimes, huh? He just tells them, there are some of you here who do not believe. Because they already knew from the beginning who, did, who was not going to believe. He said, but there's some of you here who do not believe, and for this reason, I've told you that you, no one can come to me unless it is granted them by my Father. He, he said this two weeks ago in the Gospel. He was already jabbing them. In other words, this is Jesus' way of saying, of course you don't believe me. <laughs> and the words that I'm saying, you, because you don't know the Father. You don't even know the, you think you're in a relationship with the Father, but you're not. Because the words that I speak to you are my Father's words. Remember Jesus said another time, I, I don't speak of my own. I speak only what I hear the Father say. The Father is in me and I in him. him. So to reject Jesus, to reject the words, is to reject the Father, to reject his words. So Jesus is just jabbing them again. Of course you don't believe me and my words. It's because you don't know the Father. You're not being drawn by the Father. You're not listening to the Father's words. So not, of course you're not going to listen to mine. That probably made them extra mad, right? You think I don't even know the Father? Tell me who I, what I know, what I don't know. And he's not doing this in a mean way, you know. He's just being truthful. As a result of this teaching on the Eucharist, as a result of this final jab, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Isn't it amazing how Jesus, uh, how much God respects our free will? How, how Jesus let his disciples leave him. Not just let the scribes and Pharisees leave or the people in the crowd leave, but let disciples walk away. I'm sure that wasn't his intention. I'm sure, don't you think Peter probably wanted to say, Jesus, let me pull you aside again here. You need to, you need to teach a little softer. You're pushing people away. sure they wanted to say something like that maybe they were kind of standing there in awestruck shock what's happening everybody's leaving Jesus so Jesus looks at them and he he just says to the 12 do you also want to leave what do you think they were thinking inside yeah (laughs) this is crazy talk I never heard the father talk about cannibalism. 
right? They don't understand. They don't understand he's going to transform bread into his body. <laughs> Why don't you just say that, Jesus? <laughs> you know, I can eat the bread after you transformed. Why did you wait? Let them all leave. So, you know, they're thinking, I don't understand this. I don't even know if I agree with this. This doesn't seem right at all. This is not according to my experience. <laughs> so Simon says, Master, to whom shall we go? Where else are we going to go? You have the words of eternal life. You have the words of spirit and life. Nobody else. And we've come to believe. We're convinced that you're the Holy One of God. You're the Messiah. You're the one he sent. You're the Christ. You're the anointed one. You're going to be the Savior of the world. You've got the words of eternal life. Nobody else. In other words, they're saying, we don't understand this. We don't even agree or think this is right. This is not according to my, my experience in life. This is contrary to my experience in life. But I've come to realize that I can trust you more than trusting me. I can trust your words of truth more than trusting my own limited understanding and reasoning. I can trust your words of truth and your commands more than my life experience even. Remember we said a few weeks ago uh, if, of our own life experience, if, if we never prayed for somebody to be healed and never saw somebody healed in front of us, we would conclude that God doesn't want to heal. But if we listen to the truth that God speaks when he says pray for people to be healed and they will be healed, then we begin to pray for people to be healed and slowly see people be healed. We're going to build our life on our own experience and limited understanding or build our faith life on God's truth spoken to us. That's what Peter's saying today. We've come to believe in you, so we're going to build our life and our faith on you and your words. Not build my faith on my understanding, on my reasoning. Not build my faith on my limited experience up to this point in my life. I'm going to build my faith on the solid rock of your truth, Jesus. On you. And they stay with him. Trusting him that he will work this out. I don't understand this. I don't even know how I'm supposed to accept this. What am I going to do? Please don't give me your arm to chew on it. <laughs> they trust him that he's going he's to work this out. Somehow he's going to explain this. Somehow this must be right because he said it and he's the Holy One of God. In other words, Jesus, we're all in. No matter your crazy talk, or no matter how hard the teaching gets, we're all in. That's what Jesus wants from us today, to be all in as disciples. Not picking and choosing. Notice nobody said they're going to stay with Jesus and, and say, I'm a disciple of Jesus, but... I don't agree with the Eucharist teaching. <laughs> I'm a disciple of Jesus, but I don't like that teaching. So I don't agree with that teaching. I still, I still do what I want there. They either stayed with him and were all in, or they walked away, went back to their former way of life. They were honest and clear. Notice nobody stayed with Jesus and, and, you know, as more disciples came, and they might start to question some of the teachings, and nobody stayed with Jesus and said, began to undermine those teachings and say, oh, it's okay, you can still be a disciple of Jesus, and just, but you don't have to believe in the Eucharist, you know. Because, you know, I mean, that's crazy. No, who could really believe that, you know. Notice nobody did that. There was no cafeteria disciples of Jesus at that time. No picking and choosing. All in. That's what Jesus wants from us. You know, our, our problem is not that we're, we're walking away. Of course, we're right here. We're with him. <laughs> but our, our problem in the church is we have a lot of cafeteria Catholics. 
Sometimes we don't even realize it. Sometimes we, we formally, publicly reject certain teachings of the church. Sometimes we just neglect them because we don't understand them or we're uncomfortable with them, so we just don't go there, you know. Pray for, the, pray for someone to be healed. Pray for somebody to be raised from the dead. I'm not even going to try because that that's crazy talk to me, <laughs> right? Jesus wants us to be all in. That's the whole message of the first reading with Joshua. He's riling the people up. They finally conquered all they're going to conquer in the promised land, and now they're free to settle in the land, and Joshua stops them before they're about to settle and build their lifestyles and build their life. And he says, I want you to right now decide before we go any further, you're going to decide right now, all of us, who we're going to serve. You're going to serve some of your household idols, some of the gods of Egypt that you've still carried around and entertained. You're going to serve the gods of the Amorites in whose land we've now come, the neighboring people. Or you're going to serve the one true living God who rescued you, freed you from Egypt, from that slavery in Egypt. The one true God that provided for you and brought you through the desert. Even for 40 years, your clothes and sandals didn't wear out. He provided food and water for you. The one true God who brought you here into the promised land now, who was with you, helping you conquer all these people. Who are you going to serve? Decide today. You don't let them sit on the fence. You don't let them pick and choose. No middle ground. Decide today. Who will you serve? And then he leads by example, doesn't he? It's for me and my household, for me and my family, we're going to serve the Lord. They all rise up and join him. That's what Jesus is asking us today. Who are you going to serve? Who are you going to put all your trust in? All your belief in? Even when it comes to the hard teachings. The biggest danger, the worst thing we can do is stay and undermine teachings. Undermine the words of Jesus. And say, it's okay to be Catholic and be pro-abortion. It's okay to be Catholic and not agree with its stance on marriage. It's okay to be Catholic and not agree with this, that, or the other thing. That's the worst thing we can do. Then we bring in confusion, then the next generation has no idea what it means to be Catholic. No idea what to believe. They basically just think, well, I can just do what I want. So uh, why go to church? I can have church in my head. You know, Jesus, remember, he had a teaching on this. Remember, he, he said... Uh, it's better that a millstone be tied around your neck and that you would be thrown into the sea than that you would deceive one of these little ones. Teach them the false truth. Teach them it's okay to, be, to, not, to, to reject me. Jesus was tough too in Revelations. He speaks to John and he says, he does seven letters to the seven churches. And to the, the churches who were sinning, entertaining some sin or some form of deception in their congregation, Jesus, Jesus called it out and said, you, what you're doing here is wrong. This is a sin. It's not the fullness of the truth. I'm going to give you time to repent. Right now you have time to repent. But then Jesus said, if you do not repent, I will take my spirit from you. I will take my spirit from you. What happens if you and I, we, if we refuse to repent, we lose the spirit of God. What happens if we don't have the spirit of God in us and we die? There's no life in us. So Jesus is begging us, be all in. Accept my words, even whether you understand them or not, whether you agree with them or not whether they coincide with your current life experience or not, accept my words, because my words are the Holy Spirit. My words are spirit in you. They are the life breath in you. They are life. So, Father, we just turn to you with our hearts open and our minds open. Send your Holy Spirit in a special way right now 
to convict us, each one of us, Lord. The more we grow in a deeper repentance with you, the more we grow in a deeper relationship with you, the more we have a deeper encounter with your mercy. So that's a good thing, Lord. We, we want you to send your Holy Spirit in a special way and just convict us. We want to be all in. Is there any way, any part of our life where we're not all in? Is there any part, any of your truth that we're rejecting? Any of your truth we're neglecting or just ignoring for whatever reason? Help us to be all in, Lord, so we can be full of your Holy Spirit, full of your grace like Mary was. And if whatever way that is, Lord, that we're rejecting, neglecting, or ignoring the fullness of your truth, we, we just repent right now. We repent and we ask you, Lord, fill us with your grace. Fill us with the, the grace of trust so we can trust you and the words that you speak because you are the Holy One. You are the Holy One of God. You are the one who sp speaks words of life and truth. There's nowhere else we can go for that. We want, we want you, Lord, more of you. We thank you, Lord, for this, this graceful time to repent, to grow deeper with you, to be filled more with your mercy, your forgiveness, and your truth. Let that truth transform our life more today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>